Here we're gonna look at a nice Japanese geometry problem. So this comes from a Sengaku from the Aida school in about 1800. And so these were geometry problems that were drawn onto wooden blocks, or I should say painted onto wooden blocks. And so here's the setup. We've got a circle of radius R, and inside of that circle we have an equilateral triangle which has been inscribed and then at the midpoint of one of the sides of the equilateral triangle, we put another equilateral triangle with two vertices on the circle and one at that midpoint. And our goal is to find Q, which is the length of the side of this smaller equilateral triangle in terms of R, which is the radius of the circle. So our main strategy here will be to add some line segments into this picture and then use trigonometry. So the first thing that I wanna do is put a center to this circle. So maybe I'll put a center right here and I'll call the center O for like the origin. Then next, I wanna draw two radii of this circle. So I'm gonna draw a radii from here to this vertex of this triangle, so of our larger equilateral triangle. So we know that has length R. And I'm gonna draw one more from here down to the vertex of this smaller triangle. So again, we know that this also has length R. Good. Then the next thing that I want to do is notice that we know this angle measure. This angle measure is going to be 30 degrees or pi over 6. So let's maybe talk our way through that really quickly. So we can also put a line segment here. So I will dot it um, just because it's not as important as these others. And we put, can put a line segment here. And then let's look at these three triangles that we've used to split up the equilateral triangle and notice that they are, are all congruent by the side-side-side theorem. They all share one side of the bigger triangle, but we know that's an equilateral triangle. And then they share these line segments in here, which all have length R. So in other words, this triangle right here, this one right here, and this one right here are all congruent. But that means we've got two angles right here that are equal in measure and add up to 60 degrees, which is the measure of the angle of an equilateral triangle. So that means this is half 60 degrees or 30 degrees or pi over six. Good. Now the next thing that I wanna do is add a line segment here from the origin down to this point right here, which is the midpoint of our larger equilateral triangle and the vertex of this smaller equilateral triangle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and call this length x and we'll calculate x over there in just a second. Then I'm gonna also extend this thing down to the midpoint of the base of the smaller equilateral triangle and I'm gonna call this length right here y. And also notice I know the angle measure of this angle because this is an equilateral triangle, that's gonna be pi over three. Good. Now we can use trigonometry to calculate the length of x and y in terms of r and q, given the fact that we've got right triangles here with hypotenuse r in this case, hypotenuse q in this case, height x in this case, and height y in this case. So let's go ahead and notice that we have x is equal to r, times the sine of pi over six, but notice that's equal to r over two. Sine pi over six is half. And then we also see that y is equal to q times the sine of pi over three, but that's equal to q times the square root of three over two, because sine pi over three is root three over two. Okay, great. And now we have one thing left to notice and that is we've got this larger right triangle, which I'll maybe shade in red now. So we've got this length right here, this length right here, and then the length right here, which was purple. And we know the length of all of the sides of that right triangle. This one down here is Q over two, because we have the midpoint right here of this segment, which is the base of the equilateral triangle, so it's half the length of the whole thing. 
So that tells us we've got a right triangle where the sum of these is the length of one of the sides. Notice that's x plus y. And so we have um, r over two plus q times root three over two. So this is the length of one side. And then the length of another side is q over two. So let's maybe put here, these are side lengths. And then we know the hypotenuse has length r, which is the radius of the circle. So maybe we'll put that as hypotenuse length. So the next thing that we want to do is apply the Pythagorean theorem to the triangle, which I drew over there in red, that has those two side lengths and that hypotenuse length. So let's see what that gives us. So we have r over 2 plus q times root 3 over 2 quantity squared plus q over 2 quantity squared, so that's going to be q squared over 4, equals r squared. And now we've just got some algebra to do to solve this thing for q. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to maybe factor out a half here, and if we factor a half out of this, we have to square it. And that's going to give us a fourth. Now I'll maybe multiply both sides of the equation by four, and so that'll give us r plus q times root three squared plus q squared equals four r squared. Maybe that's a little simpler to work with at the moment. Now let's go ahead and multiply this out. So that's gonna give us r squared plus two r times q times root three plus 3q squared plus q squared equals 4r squared. So that's what we get from multiplying this thing out right here. Now notice these two guys add up to 4q squared. And then we can move the 4r squared over to the left-hand side of the equation. And then we have a quadratic equation that we can use to solve for q. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 4q squared. And then what's our Q term? So our Q term is going to be this thing right here. So plus 2R times the square root of 3 times Q, like that. And then we'll have minus 3R squared. And that's from moving this 4R squared over to the other side of the equation. And now that's equal to 0. So we can use the quadratic formula to solve for Q, where those are our coefficients. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get q equals, so it'll be negative this term, so we have minus 2r times the square root of 3 plus the square root of this term squared. That's going to give us 12r squared minus 4 times this term times that term, so that's going to be plus 48r squared and then all over twice this term, so that's gonna be all over eight. Okay, nice. So now let's see what we can do. We can simplify this quite a bit. So we'll have minus two r times the square root of three plus the square root of 60 r squared. Great. And then all over eight. The next thing that I wanna notice is that I can factor an r out of this and write this as 15 times 4. We want to do that because 4 is a perfect square. So we'll write this as 4r squared times 15. So that means here we'll have minus 2r times the square root of 3 plus 2r times the square root of 15 all over 8. But now we can simplify this quite a bit and we will see that in the end, we'll have Q equals R times the quantity square root of 15 minus the square root of three over four. And so we have achieved our goal, which was to rewrite Q in terms of R, the radius of the circle. And that's a good place to stop.